Okay, so the radiator jig holds the radiator in place while you're stripping it down. At the moment I'm removing the bottom tank. The bottom fitting here is cast iron originally. You can see the damage caused by the years of the coolant. It's actually half missing. We'll touch on that in a moment. Removing the drain plug. The drain plug goes back through the back half of the tank. I'm taking it out there now. Luckily in this case it's a nice cast brass fitting so that's in good condition. What I have to do now is just uh, strip the solder out of the joint, being careful not to burn it. You'll see the hole there that I removed the drain plug. Coming down here you'll see the solder dripping out of the core past the crank hole. That's the crank hole now where I'm sweating the solder. That's the fitting hole there in the bottom where I just removed that cast iron fitting. You can see on the bottom of the core there there's all sorts of epoxy and muck that someone's tried repairing the core. The solder drips in the bucket if I'm lucky. I turn the radiator jig round and drip the solder out from the end of the tank and then I'll stand it back up and do the other side, brushing away as I go. Then we'll run the torch down here again and sweat the solder out from this side. That's the back of that fitting I was telling you about earlier. It actually is made to come through from the front face to the rear to give it strength. You'll see the other half of it in there. If you look carefully you'll see the broken part still in place. This is the old one I'm showing you. That just fits back on there originally. That's how it was made originally. I'll remake that in copper or brass along the way when I'm doing the recall. Getting back to stripping the tank again, we just gently heat both surfaces, taking into account all the moisture in the radiator. You can see the steam coming out, so there's a con considerable amount of water still in there. Sweat the solder from the crank hole. Being careful, too much heat, no brass left. It, and you're dealing with 80 year old copper, 90 year old brass, sorry, and uh, it can burn easily. So I'm just, sweep, I'm just using the brush now to clean the last of it. Just removing any lumps of solder. When I have the heat right, you'll see uh, the tank will separate. There he goes. The heat was correct there. So there's water on the other side. Turn it back over. Reheat that again. The tank will not drop off. It'll come off in my hand. So I'll just lay the tank up here and you'll see by, when I put the torch on it, you'll see the grease existing in the old tank. You'll see the condition of the tank there. It's very greasy in there, see? And that's many, many years of uh, all sorts of contaminants in the cooling system. It's very, very greasy. I actually burn that out because the best way to destroy that and remove it is to turn it to ash. I will remove that. Now, what I've just tipped out on the core there is the remains of the old cast iron fitting. I was showing you the piece that went right through. So, uh, very little of that left. Around here the crank hole, I'll remove that crank hole piece, I'll make a new piece up. Here you show the bottom end of the core, you'll recognise that from what I've just made. Now you can see that the, the bracing system makes sense. I've, you've seen me clamp it on the assembly table, I've clamped it the shape, I've got it square, and then I clamp it with the end bars. This end of the jig is slotted so I can assert pressure lengthways as well as compressing it sideways. I square it up, simply wire it square. These clamping systems I've made up, they lock in here. And that allows me to dip it in the molten solder without having my hands too close. So, this bench here is a very solid stainless steel bench. I bring the core over here. It goes in the flat bar. I 
have to maintain the level of the solder in the bath because it's very important that we have enough that we can cover the hexagon. I'll point this out for you. The hex of the face of the core is the strength. So where that hex sits together, it's only about six mil. So we only really need the solder to that depth. Any more than that, we're wasting solder, but more importantly to me, is we're coating the water surface of the radiator core with solder, which is 60% lead, which is the worst carrier of heat. So it's making the radiator heavier, and it's also it's less efficient when we coat solder up in here. So we'll pick up a piece of scrap material and just run it through the bath, check the depth of the flux. That's fine. Bring it over the molten solder. Just check the depth of this. And that's the result I'm looking for. Away every board and collecting the data, I can tell exactly how much copper and salt is in each, in each radiator when I'm finished. It. depth of it, some of the sides. Any deeper than that it gets caught up on the stacking system on the clamps there and it does no, no good at all. Before I remove the clamps I'll turn it over and inspect the other side make sure everything's fine. Twenty nine Buick Corp. in the flux and I'll run the end lock seams by hand because all we've soldered is the face of the core, the two faces. Now we have to run the lock seams. Now 
Now if you look in here again, you'll see the lock seams. They're the lock seams that we ran in, on the machine inside. But what we've dipped is the face, but we, ha we still have these lock seams. Even though they're a double roll lock seam joint, they're not soldered. So there's enough solder along the top and along the bottom for the capillary action to solder the joints. So what I do now, I run this in a certain direction so we don't fill the tubes, and I just run one at a time. And you'll see the solder run as the flame hits it. So what I'll do now is I'll just pressure clean it to remove any residue of flux. This particular job again is a 1929 Buick. There's a lot of pieces on it that I've had to rebuild. The top hose fitting bolts on. And uh, solid in the tank is a cast iron fitting, and this is what we're up against. This cast iron's done 80 or 90 years in, in coolant, so I rebuild that in brass, remake that. The bottom fitting, once again, it's cast iron. You can see how it's rotted away from the inside, so I remake them in copper brass. New overflow tube, new crank hole down inside there, and the crank hole inserted through there. 